Yeah. Yes, I'm I'm recording now. Okay, welcome, Chris, to, to this session of uh, language is a virus. We're very happy to have you here and, and to share the screen with uh, all these friends. And as we, we were talking before, uh, you will present some works and also uh, we'll be giving some information about what you're doing, maybe your influence dialogues, uh, tensions, whatever uh, you want to tell us. And, and also then we can talk about uh, uh, all, all that you're showing and posting. Welcome, Chris. Welcome, Chris. And send, Thank you. Don't forget to send us your biography. Yeah, and with and links. All the, all the links and... Yeah, I'll, I'll, send, I'll send that um, towards the end. Because <laughs> yeah, we, we got so stuck down on the technology testing that I, I, I didn't have a chance to do it, and then I'll get distracted if I do it now. Yeah. But there's no problem. Um, thank you. you know, I've, got, I've got some notes, extensive notes for this performance. So, um, yeah, yeah. Crucio Pau, hello all. Hola, mi gente. Gracias para la oportunidad para leer hoy. Um, Diochen va, am a govla. Dachen, hello. A performia, crucio pau, welcome all. Um, and it's it's really strange doing this on Zoom. I, I, like my notes here say how amazing it is to to read on Zoom because all the technology seamlessly integrates. Um, but as we've just proven, um, that isn't necessarily the case. Um, I was going to say how Zoom is more like a Henry Moore and live performance is like the Pompidou Center with the architecture on the outside. Um, but it turns out that Zoom is just as you know, it's just as patchy as live performance. The only difference is, is that we're um, unmediated or we're being mediated while, while we're being unmediated i don't know it's live and it's not live isn't it it's, it's a very strange thing um so all my all my all my nice notes that i'd written uh have, have come to nothing uh so i'll plow on with the performance uh my work today is going to be in three parts i'm going to read some old stuff um i'm going to duet with myself um which is you know could be you know an act of pathetic narcissism um but that will give people like a nice little introduction to my practice if you're not familiar with my work. I'll then do um, a live treatment of a text about uh, the QAnon conspiracy theories and try to destroy everything about uh, that movement through the treatment. Um, to give you some acoustic accompaniment, I've got some, a drum and bass track I did uh, with, with some vocals uh, from Sean Bonney um, within that. And then I'll finish off by uh, performing the uh, text treatment that I've done together with uh, a piece that I did last night on the same topic, which did a similar form of treatment. And we'll, we'll, we'll see where we get. OK. Um, let's get on with the first piece. If I can... Uh, can hear this okay this first piece is the first piece I ever had published um, it, it featured in I think and 10 or 11 published by Bob Cobbing and Adrian Clark and it's a fictional map of the night sky and uh, I, I like to use this in every performance I do really because it's always nice to perform the first piece that you have published um, it's got a bit of synergy here because um, also was performed on BBC Radio Wales, thanks to something that uh, Zoe Scolding helped to set up. So I'm gonna play the recording that was done for BBC Radio Wales, duet with myself and try to give you a visual of the text as well, an imaginary map of the night sky above N7. I wrote this poem when I was living off the Holloway Road. Uh, you can't, that's anywhere in London, you can't actually see the night sky in, in any 
detail, uh, the stars aren't visible because of the pollution and so forth, you know, the excess light coming from the surface. So I basically I wrote a I wrote a fictional night sky uh, for, for myself. Uh, this is quite a visual poem, uh, which on the radio, uh, some of that, that aspect might be lost. So therefore, to compensate for that, the loss of the visual aspect, um, perhaps you could close your eyes and imagine, unless you're driving, of course, but close your eyes and imagine constellations appearing in your mind as the as you hear the words or alternatively uh, words appearing like constellations in the sky this is condensed light inaudible against the night sky drapes like stars dwindle the moon's foregone conclusion with autistic what about all this metaphysical inaudible drapes autistic something earlows rash real remedy Eel peels, eyes off the mirror, a cheering and pressy. And pillows shriek and the remillo mirrors and the cheering impression, the leaves imprint. And picking out a rhythm at last, the staccato at first, and then becomes, and then becomes, and then becomes. And, becomes. and melancholy is somewhat metaphysical, but I'm in inaudible, the sky conclusion, and he's con convinced of this, convinced of the. Oh, the song peels my the tears, the tears, and the drapes, and the oods, and the and the after, and the last, and the and the itch. And then readable forms shrill like the E impressions of leaves. That is, the night stars are foregone pinpricks. He blows and he brings blues, he's on to some unreadable stuff, and the thoughts are prints, and the act and the cat, and the this inaudible, inaudible stars dwindle. Inaudible against the night sky, the drapes like this about this imprint. He, rhythm at last, he becomes he, D of he. And is it the eight in the image? And the foregone image. The cat and the melancholy light against the foregone image. Insties onto some deals. Deals eyes off the mirror churn. In order to play, in order to play. In order to play against the blare. Against the blare, the form, the shrill. The shrill E. Fill E impressions. The tease, the. This conclusion, night sky drapes like autistic imprints. In the imprints, the, the rhythms, the thoughts half formed, the stubble leaves, the pillows, rasps, shrill remedy, roaring, the picking at, at evening, eyeing them like the Turin roses. Leaves are autistic. That is rinse, the night stars, the rinse pattern, the imprints, the rhythms. I don't know who that was that started playing uh, after. Uh, the thank you so beautiful, thank you so beautiful, much. Beautiful man. <laughs> oh, how moving. Thank you. I thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Chris. Well, that, that, that's just—it's well, well, yeah. always always a pleasure to read that. Always a pleasure to read that. You know, um, yeah. I'm going to try something a bit more experimental now, because that, that was me playing it safe. <laughs> so fuck me. So this is going to go. Um, right. I'll shut this Chromebook for a moment. Um, I'm going to get a pen and do it like a you know live writing. Thing. Actually, shit, no, I need the Chromebook open. You know, there's technology everywhere at this point, isn't there? I hope you're not recording me putting my password into my, my Chromebook there, guys. Okay, let's go for two things okay two, there's two technological things that need to happen here one i need to play the drum and bass track two i need to do a treatment about this article about QAnon conspiracy theories and then as soon as that drum and bass track is finished and the treatment is finished 
I'm going to move straight on with performing the treatment that I've done of that text live. So it's completely sight unseen um, together with the pieces that I wrote last night, which I disdainfully threw on the floor while disregarding my notes from earlier. This could become a shambles, but let's hope so. If you can't hear the music, by the way, um, somebody, somebody signal and I'll move the audio closer. In fact, let's just move the whole thing over to the speaker. You get to see my house. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
I'll send the Spotify link afterwards. It's on Spotify, or I'll just send you the MP3, whichever you prefer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but I'm just talking about the uh, Sean Bonney. You talk about that uh, link or that connection as his text, something like that. That's yeah, record, I, yeah, I I basically wanted to make some drum and bass with Sean's voice in it. <laughs> um, so I asked his sister's permission and made some, and then stuck it on Spotify. It's not. Like, there's no connection to to the piece other than that's about racism and QAnon are a bunch of racist cunts. So I thought it might work as a backdrop and it also gave me a chance to showcase what I've done and, and to create a performance alongside what I'm going to do now, which is um, basically destroy, like basically all this QAnon bullshit going into the bowl. It's being fucked with a big, well, I don't know what this is, Maybe you could tell me. And we have, we'll see how toxic it is now. Can you can you see that? Can you see? Can you see what I'm doing with the bowl? Because it would be a shame if this doesn't get, because this is quite a good visual thing to do. Yeah, we put, can some see. Light, put some light over you or something or closer to a light or, or change. That's all right. I can, I can do some more. Candle, or something like that, like uh, make light over the. So, swap sides. So, can, can you see the text now? Yep. yep. Not the wall, but the text in your hand. <laughs> Now the ball, yeah. yeah. Yes. Almost. Actually, this is, it's much easier doing this shit live.
vowel extraction. Vowel extraction. Who is Q? Who is Q? Who, who is Q? Oh, 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 oh
presence. I I can see the being mediated while being un being mediated while being unmediated. The technologies are embedded, not utterly rendered on the outside. Like this is the difference between neither reading or being any better automatically than the merit of, and it depends on its, and it does give us features and a base to landscape around. I think that's me done. Thank you guys. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Wonderful. Powerful. And I see you have some, some sounds that you want to show to us. I remember you said at the end, I want to show you some sounds or or already show everything. I've, I've done all the sounds. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I, remember I can play you a song on my acoustic guitar if you want more, but it would it, it would it would probably be shit. <laughs> It's, it's great to see all the thing, the different things that you make. Seems like uh, I remember when you went in Chile to follow the escritor session, and and you present my book uh, Neumatica, who was uh, published by the Martin Garris and follow the escritores. And, and remember your first stage at the moment, and, and now that that uh, uh, inner and, and that, that was a wonderful gig. You had hundreds of people there. I remember you saying, I, like, I remember like knowing Martine Gubbins and, and yourself from from London. Um, you know, Martine Gubbins obviously a little bit better because you didn't spend long there. But um, I remember you saying, oh, yes, I'm going to launch my book, Pneumatica. And I just, do you want to read? And I was like, yeah, there'll be about 10, 20 people there. Fucking <laughs> okay, well, hundreds of people there. I was like, what the yeah. what is this? <laughs> these, 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 are, these, are, these are proper artists that have respect with their from their society rather than people who just do rude things above pubs. <laughs> you know, it was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. Cafe Literario, is it still there? Yes. Uh, sort of. It was uh, it was um was it uh, Felipe um, Yeah, it was uh, robbed or a, a little no. destroyed uh, with the uprising here in Chile. Uh, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the, the, the uprisings were good, but I'm, I'm, I'm sad that, you know, a, a nice space got yeah. caught up in the crossfire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and all the books and everything lost. Really? Oh. Wow. Well, they, they they should have perhaps been more uh, radical and and inclusive. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't I haven't followed what's happened on in Chile. Obviously, yeah, just, um, you stay you stay in Chile for a while, like for years or two, one two years, and you have a, and you, you you leave that connection between writers forums in London and and for the escritores in Chile and and the mutual influence between like uh, you know like uh, the the kind of End of the world, uh, Chilean side, and, and and the London moment of, of those time with all of all of us together. How, how do you, how do you feel that translation? I, I, I can't hear you very well, Martin. That's could correct. you um could you repeat the question and maybe that turn the volume? Not, your yeah. microphone, Martin, is is it's not good. good. No, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. So you have to change it, but. Uh, here, can you hear me? No, no. I can, I can hear you. Can you can you repeat the question? Sorry. Uh, it's not. It's, I will try to talk to a louder. It's not uh, really a question. It's about the, your experience of those moments between uh, within Writers Forum in London and uh, and for the escritores in Chile and that kind of connection between South America and North America and you're going from there and returning to another place. That, that oh Jesus! That, that we live together in, in those years. Jesus, yeah, yeah, no, no. It's that 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 kind of that kind of movement, if you like, that that, that sense of movement and travel is very. Um, I, I don't want to say flux, <laughs> but you know, movement and travel is very important to to my writing practice. And the energy, like the energy in London, was amazing. 
um, you know, I, I kind of studied at Dartington and kind of like uh, parked poetry for about six, nine months after after that. I just thought right, I don't want to do anything to do with contemporary art. I just want to kind of just like let my brain settle a bit after doing my degree because I, I was just like, but I, I know what I like, but I don't know what I know. <laughs> um, so I just kind of needed to to rediscover things a little bit. And then um, the the energy in, in the London scene at that point, I think it's since improved, it's become a lot more diverse. Um, but even then it was just amazing. There were you know, like some, some amazing writers, and the, just the opportunity to kind of hang out with people that you really, whose work you really loved as well, was was awesome. You kind of you kind of get to sort of like like hang out with with your legends to a certain extent. You know, you could have like a a beer with Bob Cobbing, <laughs> and you'd just be like, "Fuck, it's Bob Cobbing," <laughs> and, and and like his his writing had basically transformed my whole sort of life philosophy. You know, to a certain extent, you know, I've been trying to, I, I, I considered it complete bullshit. I completely considered his writing complete bullshit when I first discovered it. And then I tried to dismiss it academically and just couldn't. But as try as I liked to say that what he was doing was not writing, I couldn't. And then that kind of opened up a door inside of me to say, shit, <laughs> shit. <laughs> That, that, like what's possible creatively and politically much bigger than I thought. <laughs> and, you know, I'm still, I'm still dealing with that rift, if you like, <laughs> still, still trying to overcome it um, between the, like the, the rational and the possible. Um, I'm done talking bullshit now. I'm just talking, talking too much really. Um, but yeah, the energy in London was amazing. And then to, um, like travel to Santiago, where I think you have, uh, you, I think if like the avant-garde stuff that took place in South America took place under, you know, in, me in many respects, it, it took place under so much political pressure, like so much political pressure, you have, um, you know, poets like Raul Zarita talking about how he had the shit kicked out of him, but the like intelligence officers didn't really know what his poetry was saying. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. And, you know, that was very different. You know, it's, it's such a different context. Um, but you have like, amazing, such amazing work that, that's coming forward from there. Um, and, and, and so just to see that and then to explore those connections, it's like, like for me, you've kind of got this like North American thing. And I, again, I'm, I'm just like talking off the top of my head and in a very unacademic way here. So apologies, but you've got this like North American language poet thing, perhaps coming from the beat movement and like the, the work of Jane Retallick was kind of instrumental in my thinking about taking the, the vowels and the vowel extraction out of QAnon, um, you know, just, just taking individual components out, treating language, you know, in that material way. And then um, obviously you've got the, the whole William Burroughs language is a virus, let's cut it up, let's see what it really says. I think we're all aware of that. And then you have the you have these examples in, in perhaps Europe and South America where people are, are are kind of exploding these ideas. And then you have this whole kind of like early twentieth century Russian idea, which is actually it's all well and good to be experimental with concrete poetry, but it really should be experimental for a reason. There should be a reason behind it. it should be. It, it should there should be a material reason why you're experimenting. You shouldn't just ex experiment for experiment's sake. And I, I've not been. I'm not. I'm enjoying trying to square that, <laughs> to square all those, um, to square all those 
tangents in my poetry, mostly unsuccessfully, I think, but I enjoy trying. <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've just been talking far too long and I've had quite a lot of one. Yeah, great, great. Uh, that's why the, but that experience, I think, is that something we, we experiment uh, some of us here and we talk a lot about the, that connection between like the the, the 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 action with the public and and after to go to the bar and to continue a discussion and after to go to the street you don't know to to, so to go to Will, Will, William Blake uh, Graves and then go to speak a tower in the center of London and then to uh, fight with the police to chant bonnings you know like things like was really like uh, yeah that that connection that that when poetry is not only to to write a poem, you know, you are like in the it's a kind of ethics of of uh, of life, for in a way. Uh, yeah, I think if if you, I'm sure some of you know personally or are aware of Ben Watson or Out to Lunch as he goes by. I, I remember going to, and I think he's a really good polemicist. He's a really good um, critical thinker. Um, I think. I think he gets a you know, for, for whatever reason, he did, it doesn't get the attention it deserves. Perhaps, perhaps he's a little bit too committed to, to, to certain ideas. I don't know. But I remember him saying a, a talk in Camden, you know, like 20 years ago or whatever, um, that it, it doesn't really matter if you don't get bums on seats with poetry. You know, he, he, you know, you've got, you're never going to be able, like poetry is never ever going to be able to compete with Hollywood, right? He didn't say that. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm furnishing what he said. But he goes, if you, if you as with one, as one poet, can can like enhance one person's life, and then then that makes it worth it. And I think, to a certain extent, he's right. But I also think about what Chris Stein from Blondie said, the guitarist from Blondie. And he said that um, it's all well and good having, you know, a piece of avant-garde work that 10 people think are good. But it's really cool to write something that everyone loves and everyone gets and everyone thinks is cool. <laughs> and I, I think we kind of need to have an eye on both of those things. Otherwise, we end up talking to ourselves, if that makes sense. We end up just talking to ourselves. There's nothing wrong with talking amongst each other and doing, like to the performance I did today, I probably wouldn't have done anything like as wild as this, even, you know, at crossing the line, for example. You know, but I'm happy to sort of play and experiment with you guys to try out new ideas to see what works. Um, but I think there's a sort of a risk that comes with sort of too much self-indulgence, if you like, in, in wider performance. It's hard. Chris, it's hard. Where, <laughs> Chris, where are you getting the, the, that you said the early modern Russian idea that um, kind of talking about experiment for experiment's sake, can you give me like a source on that? I'm kind of interested in that. Um, yeah. In ping, talking, me your, talking about not, ping me your beats afterwards and I'll find the book with the exact quote. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. Is that cool. is that early 20th century or what are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's an, it was somebody in the 1920s talking about the role of mm. concrete poetry in Russia. And then it was translated. And I can't, oh. it, it's what, you know, one of those things that you read and you go, fuck, that's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then I can't yeah. remember who, who said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. But I, I will find the book and I will track it down to you and, and send you the direct quotation. Yeah, if we're sharing I Robert, deeds. I think if you want sort of a more immediate reference, Robert Shepard said something similar, similar. You know, it's like, you know, there's no point experiment. He didn't say again, it's no point experimenting for experiment's sake. But it's like, you need to have a... One thing that really fucks me off about poetry in, in our contemporary sense, if you like, is that we, you kind of get this work that is contemporary in inverted commas, and we all, we, we are all guilty of it to a certain extent. We, we use the same tone of voice, we use the same meter, and it's kind of going back to William Carlos Williams, and it's going back to um, Ginsburg, and it's going back to T.S. Eliot, and 
is go, and we use a similar meter and we use a similar voice and we use similar like processes to destroy texts. And it, it, it's kind of like a subtext for being experimental and for being radical. But, you know, surely you need to, you need to do more than that. You know, we, we need to do more than go through the motions of voting in a democracy. And you need mm -hmm. to do more as poets than just go through the, the fundamentals of being aesthetically radical. You know, you need to you need to find stuff that works. I, I'm not saying I'm doing this successfully. It's just what I wrestle with. <laughs> well, working backwards, a, a few questions. I, I but to something you just said, and this is very much working backwards. So, so what is this like for you? What is to, like, what is talking about your work like? Because you, 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 you slipped in a comment earlier that, that you know, talking to people and 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 when Martine was talking about go to Blake's grave and, and all of that, you slipped in a comment about how important that is. I, I mean, wh what is that like for you? You know, what is this moment like for you? Um, I mean, yeah, yeah open-ended <laughs> <laughs> two things simultaneously uh one absolutely terrifying mm -hmm. and, and two incredibly gratifying because i get to you know we're, we're kind of you know we're, we're all looking for a, a way to engage with each other and learn from each other as well and just going like just going to blake's grave you know is, is awesome I don't remember going to Blake's grave. I remember going to his wife's grave. <laughs> um, but yeah. Have you worked we, with we, them? We, 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 uh, uh, I think somebody, I can't remember who said it. So please don't ask me to, to, to read it. <laughs> I'm done. Come with it. Somebody, <laughs> you probably Google it and find, somebody said art is an excuse to make friends. Hmm. And I think that sense of community, that, um, is, is so important. It allows you to create so many other boundaries like economic and social and ideological. And, you know, art has such an important role to play in that way. It's just, a, it's a way, it's a way to connect. I think I, if it hadn't have been for art uh, I, 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 and for poetry specifically, I would have fucking lost myself a long, long, long time ago. You know, there's a line from one of Sean's lines. He's like, well, I'm not the only one of my kind. <laughs> kind of go fuck, there are people out there who are interested in, in doing weird things which are philosophically grand and <laughs> um, risk failure <laughs> um, and politically ambitious. That That's hugely important, you know. Yeah, and we, we all find I, I think we live in a world where we're we're pretty much powerless, and so art is is one way where we can sort of assert a degree of control, or at least um, express the chaos that's that's going on within us or or, or without us, mm. if that makes sense. Sorry, I'm, again, I I will talk until people tell me to shut the fuck up, <laughs> so I'll shut the fuck up. That was really great, um, Chris. You know, thanks very much for the performance. I really, yeah, really enjoyed it. I, and, I, and I mean, it was interesting, yeah, what you were saying about what you can do with certain audiences and, um, yeah, that, that it's almost like, yeah, having a, you know, a, a limit on the, the people you're talking to allows something different. And, um and there, yeah, so I was really, yeah, really interested if you had any more thoughts about that. I guess that's one question. And then another mm -hmm. question that might be kind of related is, um, yeah, I suppose the, the yeah, what it means to be in Wales. You know, you've been in these different places in London and in, you know, talking about being in, in, in Santiago and, yeah, what, what about what about what what what's that context like? Is that where you are now? And yeah, what's that? Yeah, like? yeah, I'm in Pembrokeshire at the moment, which which is obviously you know that I'm as far west as you can go in the UK. Where, where are you? Which where Pembrokeshire? Exactly? Where exactly? Pem where Pembrokeshire, near near Haverford West, about two miles out of Haverford West. Where? Village, Green Hill. Oh, 
Okay. Do you know it? <laughs> well, I don't not not exactly, but I know that area very well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the Dale Road outside Haverford West. I'm about six miles from Broadhaven, if you know that. Yeah. Um, but it's as far west as you can get. It's like I've thrown myself, you know, as far as as far away from the, the east. <laughs> the east of London <laughs> or, or the southeast of England as you can get without going north. Um, <laughs> um, that, that's a throwaway joke, really. I'm glad someone loved. Uh, the <sighs> yeah, two questions. First question about the audiences you're talking to. I, I really admire people like um, Luna Montenegro and Adrian Fisher who can kind of rock up in perhaps an environment which isn't necessarily expecting performance art and just fucking slay, you know, just through just through conviction and personality as well as, you know, the, the wonderful aesthetic sensibility they've got. Um, and a lot of technological precision as well. They always use their technology well, which helps. Uh, <laughs> But also perhaps being two people. I mean, this is perhaps a different question, isn't it? But that, you know, that that's true. Dialogue, you know. That's true. I love that. But they, you know, it's, 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 the, the, it's the Montenegro, Montenegro Fisher, you know, they're, they're sort of one person on Facebook and you're yes. never sure who's, who's responding. <laughs> so, you know, there's that, there is that lovely play. But um, yeah, but as a solo performer, I think you do essentially have a lot more risk you're kind of going, this is me, <laughs> this is me, listen to me. And so you've got, you know what, you need to kind of build that rapport and you need to have a, a different sense of playfulness. You can't necessarily perform in a way where you uh, can kind of perform with each other and then close everyone off. So I think you've got, it's a very good point there. But I really respect the way that they kind of like rock up and just do awesome work. <laughs> um <laughs> I think in terms of like solo performers, I'm not sure who who really could do that. Uh, I think Bob Cobbing, the best work I ever saw him do is when he was working alongside either Jennifer or I saw him do a performance with Tom Leonard once, which was awesome. Um, but I think even Bob Cobb, or, or with working with um, with Hugh at the Clinker, you know, that's when that's when he was at his best. Is uh, so I think you've got, you've hit a good point there. It's worth kind of getting away from the idea of the poet and looking at um, what we can do collectively. Yeah. It, um, group performance, but then again, group performance can be you know quite chaotic and full of failure as well. <laughs> There's nothing worse than watching you know a bad group of people perform and. <laughs> I guess uh, what I was asking was something different because you were saying that you know it, well you know it's all very well doing something in a you know a, a small group of people but you know what what about those other contexts but actually there's a sort of yeah like a permission to or a possibility not a permission do you need permission I don't know but there's you know do you feel there's a possibility to do something in a space are you, do you is it because you're making a particular set of relationships with those those people you're aware of you're kind of aware of who's in the group and that's allowing you to go further for example just now when you were performing is it having a sense of who you're talking to that might have been more difficult if you'd been somewhere else so it lets you go further is that I think I think so I think people I, I think poetry and I, you know, I still just, I prefer to describe myself as a writer rather than a poet, but I think poetry has its, it's so loaded and people get so hostile to seeing language as, as they might think of it being bastardized and, and it, they, they want to be able to get and they want to be able to understand things. So if you're going to go, if you're going to rock up in a conventional place and, and read, you either have to just go completely crazy and then maybe add some extra media to it, like noise or painting. So people go, oh, now, now it's safe. Now it's safe because this is experimental music. Now this is experimental 
noise. I think if you if you just do the, if you just do the poetry thing, you you meet so much hostility. Certainly in the UK, I'm not sure what it's like in Europe or the US, um, but people just go, oh, you know, just, you know, n- nobody look like nobody looks at Cubist painting and goes, well, that's complete bullshit anymore. You know, a couple of people might, but you know, they'd be very reactionary, but. Poetry doesn't get the same license. People are very attached to language. And if you start challenging what language means, even in a sort of performative sense, it really unsettles people. And I think that, that being unsettled is what we need more of. We need to go, actually, you know, we need, we need to be more uncertain of language and how it's used in society. Mm. Uh, and again, I just start talking about other subjects other than the one you asked me about. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, but it is. Yeah. I mean, the other question was about Wales and, you know, what what that what that's done t- to your work or. Yeah, the, the, this is the thing. It's like um, I was born in Wales and grew up in Wales uh, with in an English family. Um, and so I was always, uh, also the, the, the uh, also growing up as like a half brother and half sister to my to my siblings and so they always used to say oh you're welsh you're welsh and they used to tease me about it so i kind of rejected being welsh for many years i was just like no i know i'm british i'm english i'm not welsh and then um but obviously you know i grew up in Monmouthshire and spent lots of time around swansea with my, with my dad and um other family members and then, but the thing is, he was going to South America, going to Patagonia, to like Puerto Madryn and those Welsh-speaking communities. I saw, like, I spoke people, spoke to people that spoke Welsh and Spanish and English, and I didn't speak any Welsh. And there were these kind of like concrete chapels <laughs> in the middle of, like, the middle of Patagonia, and this there was a lot of there was a there was a degree of Welshness in South America that I'd never really encountered in myself, if that makes sense. <laughs> and I was just like, shit, shit, I, I get it. I get it. These people left their country because they felt persecuted <laughs> and they weren't able to practice, you know, Protestantism, whether you, know, and you agree with Protestantism and that whole sort of, you know, Calvinistic work ethic or not, by the by, they didn't feel able to practice their religion properly they didn't feel able to speak their language properly so they literally left the uk only a few hundred or a few thousand whatever but it kind of just made me go it made me question a lot about what the uk was and it kind of gave me a a sense that it made me question a lot mm. so being back in coming back to wales having never really felt particularly welsh in my youth mm. it, was, it was a very important important part i just thought well actually i want to move home i want to live at home i want it somewhere where i feel at home that is familiar and i want to make it i want to make it better <laughs> I, I want this i want this this nation to be what it could be or this part of the world to be what it could be and, you know it just just becoming aware of the fact that there were cultures that had been repressed within the UK, mm. like made me just go, "What? How the fuck did that happen?" <laughs> and like it, 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 again, like my my life is basically one of t- having like certain assumptions and having them turfed out and having to rethink everything. Mm. And so I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to rethink Wales as much as I'm trying to rethink myself continually. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> should should we, should we finish off? Is anybody still there? Should we should we finish off with um some sound poetry, or does anybody have any more questions? I just have a comment. Well, sure. an, an appreciation actually. I I really. Uh, have perceived uh, a bond in your work between, uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it right, but between rumination and regurgitation, regurgitation you say that? I sure. Think it's, it's kind of like a, 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 a 
you know, you create um, an atmosphere of, of, of animality, you know, embracing your, your animality. And, and it's very refreshing to see how words have a skin, you know, that the words can be tasted. And at the same time, is the logos, but also is, is, is the randomness and, and it's um, also the, 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 a food that is worth nothing, apparently, but at the same time is worth everything just because you're able to, to perform and do something with it. So, so I just wanted to, to, to communicate that, that I perceive in your work. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Can, can I ask your name? Oh, my name is Lena. Hi, Lena. Yes. No, thank you for your comment. Oh, you're welcome. I, yeah, I, I hope to attend more of these things as, a, as an audience rather than a performer as well. So if, if you don't see me here for a month or for two weeks, feel free to chastise me, all of you, and say, Chris, why aren't you, why aren't you attending these things? Because, you know, there, there's so much good work going on and like that I'm not aware of, and especially in this little corner of, you know, rural Wales. <laughs> um, and this is a great opportunity to see what's going on. So, you know, please do, if you don't see me here for a couple of weeks, like send me a message going, fuck you doing, Chris. <laughs> please. Uh, Chris, you said something earlier about um, failure, which I thought was really interesting. Because one of the things that used to certainly amuse Aidan, Aidan McArdle and myself, uh, about LUC, London and Construction, was how you really hated some of the things that we did. And we got a great kick out of how much we hated them. And we would deliberately push it slightly to make it even worse, uh, it, just, to, just to see what you'd say. So I just want sure. to in terms sure. of- Sure, Absol absolutely. I, I'm going to tell an anecdote here. And, this, and I, I, I do tell this story like regularly often. You know, people say, what, what's the worst sort of like moment you've been involved in as a performer, or what's the the worst creative failure you've been part of? And I go, I, I've got a fucking good one, <laughs> <laughs> which is there was a tribute to um, Alan Ginsberg, which was being like sh this was before streaming and like video conferencing was popular, and, and it was being sort of broadcast, you know, around various universities of the world. And then, and with you know different groupings, and Buffalo were involved, and um, yeah, they had uh, Leroy Jones, you know, but Baraka, Amiri Baraka, performing. You know, saw him perform live, doing something. You know, got a beat Bush. I think was the was the poem he did. And then London Under Construction, of which I was a part, were, were performing, and we ended up. I, wrapping each other up in toilet paper while like, simultaneously reading each other's texts in a really shit way and it was so embarrassing it, it was like, <laughs> it's a good story it's just like one of those it's like we really try to push the envelope as far as you can and you end up in failure but I think it's important if, to, to recognize that you know it's okay to fail <laughs> Um, creatively, in fact, it's through failing creatively that we learn, you know, um, and that, that and that's why work like I think work that we all engage with, where we kind of just sort of tear texts apart, we regurgitate them, we improvise them, we um, look for asso random associations with them, we um, try to realise them in movement or in sound. <laughs> And, you know, every tiny little oscillation which can come from the text, um, you know, we, we embrace it and then go, well, well fuck, that was a bit shit. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we can learn so much from that. Um, but, but sometimes... Some, sometimes it's nice to it's nice to hold on to I think Doug Jones or we, like the poet Doug Jones said he goes you know he goes I'm not going to improvise tonight I just want to do some ringers I want to <laughs> you know sometimes it's good to get there and just ring your bell <laughs> and to say you know this is what I'm all about and so people go oh that's what you're all about and then they, they can 
kind of accept the more radical work incrementally. Um, it's difficult. It's, it, you know, you never you never want to do the same thing twice, but you never want to um, be. <laughs> Yeah, but you just don't want to just come, come out with complete garbage the whole time. <laughs> it, that's what writing's about, isn't it? You don't you don't bother writing stuff down unless it's worth writing, you know. Um, so in performance, you shouldn't bother performing things that aren't worth performing. But you know, until you do it, you don't know. Until you write something, you don't know whether it needs editing or not. You know, the amount of times I've sat there and gone, I've got a really good poem percolating in my brain. You sit down, you write it, and you look at it and you just go, that's bullshit, isn't it? You know, you need, you need to go through that process in performance as much as you do with writing, I think. Going back to what Zoe had said about, uh, about audiences and well, co combining those two aspects together, audiences and failure, there was one particular story which... I can only tell secondhand because I wasn't there, but you were there. And that's, I wonder, could you kind of give us a sense of that, which is the, um, it was a performance by LUC in Hackney Wick in a, a, a squat. <laughs> and it, it just strikes me that that is just possibly the best thing that LUC have ever done. Of course, I wasn't part of it. But uh, just in terms of the audience reaction and failure, can you just remi remind us about that? Oh, abs absolutely. It was gloriously bad. Like, gloriously bad. I learned so much from that. It was a, a squat, um, like an art squat, and they were trying to get something a little bit more radical going. And so they kind of invited all these artists and DJs to do stuff. And... Um, you know, they, they kind of gave us free license to we like. They said, oh, yeah, and here's London under construction. And we had the Italian poet. I'm not sure if he's still on the scene or doing anything. Enrico Mombello. Uh, he was trying, but no, he was actually um, doing, like, trying to integrate. And this is always difficult unless, you, you know, unless you've got an amazing body um, movement into poetry. So he was kind of like reading his poems and rolling around on the floor. Meanwhile, there were a load of people. This was like half eight in the evening. So half the audience were um, just turning up and were presented with an Italian poet writhing round on the floor. The other half of the audience had been there all day and were caned as fuck. There were also what I would call like problematic, potentially police agitators, like dressed in football shirts, wandering around going, oi, oi, and like in a very unfamiliar kind of crew cut way. They, they weren't like fascists. They were um, kind of going, oh, yeah, I really want to get angry. And they, they just looked like deliberate police agitators wandering around. And then there was Enrico in the middle of that, getting lost and he ended up have, like having people try to kick him in the head <laughs> and like and then so we said like like please don't we kind of formed a ring please don't please don't kick him in the head and um but then people just carried on ignoring him and just saying is the bar open <laughs> oh it, it was it was painful it, it's basically like you're not researching your space you're not researching your audience you, you kind of have this idea of this is what art is. You know, we're being very experimental artists. Everyone's going to love this and we're all on the same page. And, you know, it, it's a lot more complex than that. <laughs> you, know, it, you, you know, ideally we should have scoped the place out for a couple of hours and tried to do something obscure in the corner. But no, we, we had a preconceived idea of what we should do and try to impose it on them. Got to read the room sometimes. Yeah, you were run out of there, weren't you? And uh, the, the whole lot of you were. <laughs> that's, that's what I'd heard afterwards, that you were affected. I'm not sure if we were run out. I think we just went, fuck this. I think it, we, I think it was a case of, you guys are being fucking weird. <laughs> there were also police agitators there. I, I, I swear to this day there were police agitators there. Um, and I, I certainly had enough. 
I, I don't think I'd be run out there. I just think I wanted to fucking get out of there as soon as possible. It was like it was like humiliating, to be honest. <laughs> but you know, th- this happens sometimes. You know, people you, know, you can turn up in spaces and do avant-garde work with the left-wing crowd, and they just go, you know, you know you, I met a till of the stockbroker at um, a gig in Monmouth. It was only me and him on the bill. And um, I did, you know, my thing. He did his thing. And then I was chatting to him in the break and I said, oh, I like, I love your work, by the way. And he went, I wish I could say the same about yours. Very fucking, it's a bit, bit fucking obscure and academic, isn't it? And I was just like, well, you know, whatever, mate. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he thought I was just being... Um, elitist, I guess, or trying to do something elitist. All, all I'm trying to do is break language down to its raw component parts and see what comes out in the mix. <laughs> um, and he wants to he wants to make jokes, which he does very well, you know, in rhyming language, but he really didn't like my work very much. Can't say I blame him, but, you know, it, it, its merit is, is, is relative, but it was interesting, his reaction. Sorry, again, t- I'll just carry on talking forever. So <laughs> cut across at any point. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. Hi, Luna um, and Adrian. Everyone from <laughs> Didn't know you were there. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> yes, here we are. Hello. Uh, you were <laughs> very present there. Very present. Hello. You, uh, Luna and Adrian, you have to talk, uh, tell everyone uh, who of, uh, of you uh, uh, responds to the messages from Facebook. We all want to know that. No, that's secret. That's secret. It's actually <laughs> alternate. You'll never know. You'll never know. We not only have one Facebook, but we also have one Instagram. We have one telephone and we have one email. So, there you are. I didn't know you were there. I would not have, um, I would not have mentioned it if I'd known you were there. <laughs> but at least Aww. I was nice about you. Oh, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Happily, yeah, you said are. all the good things about them, so we're okay. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, as, as I was saying, Chris, uh, may, maybe now it's the opportunity for you to propose uh, something to improvise, some idea, some sound. Uh, yeah, well... I've got I've got two copies of um, Richard Kostelenitz's well he edited it set text set sex sound sex no um, text sound texts um, I've got a dear friend's copy and I never got a chance to give it back to him and then I've got a spare one so but that what that means is I can choose a page at random let's go for this one page one hundred and sixty. Scott Helms. Anybody know Scott Helms' work? I've never come across Scott Helms before. Great. Anybody know Scott Helms' work? Raise your hand. Anyone? No, anyone? No, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're all about to become more acquainted with Scott Helms' work on page 161 of Richard Costa-Lennitz's text, sound text. I hope it's on the same page on this other edition. Yes, it is. Okay, um, let's actually get this right so that you can see text. That's, is there a way that this works where you can see it? That, that's it. Yeah. See what, let's go through someone who isn't Scott Helms with this, this line here. <laughs> I tell you what, you do Scott Helms, I'll do somebody who isn't Scott Helms, and then we'll discover who it is that's not Scott Helms afterwards. Does that work for you guys? 
can't really see it well enough to read it though. That's the thing. Yeah, but we can't see it so much. Ah, oh, damn these, damn these things. Okay. Um, Do all the voices yourself. It's it's I'll a good what? idea. It's it's a good idea though. Can you can you take a photo of the page? Yeah, I'll take a photo and I'll send it to the to you all now. I tried to find it on the web, but it's I can't do do it that quickly. So you can send it. Uh, you could the, give us a phrase. Yeah, you I'm just going to send you. I'm going to send you two. We're, we're all going to do sight and sing. Now I'm going to send it through Zoom to you all. Bear with me. I'm having so much fun. This is wonderful. Um, It's going to work, right? Share photo, allow files. There's one. Does that come over? Yep. Fine. I'll do. I'll do the next one now. You can choose. You can either do words or you can do. Or you can do uh, visuals. Jesus, can't, can't leave this now, right? I like this. I'll tell you what, I'll send you the next one. You guys do that and I'll do the visuals. Does that work? It's going to be very difficult for me to um, send, share both. Is you will see that. Can you all see that text? Yes. Cool. Okay, we'll find out who did that text afterwards. I'm going to do Scott Helms's uh, text. The series of semicircles and geometrical lines. Scott Helms, 161. <laughs> About water meeting water, about water meeting water, about water meeting water, meeting water, water meeting water, water meeting water, oh, go back to water, oh, go back to water, go back to water, 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 meeting water, go back to water, 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 come. Tum, 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 Let's go home.
Fail. Very well, sir. And did you ever tell him something oh. about me? Oh, right. I'm twice. Cash. Smile. Cash. Go may see. Learn more. Considerons <laughs> aussi le profit. Prenez mon terre. Des de sexe. De prix. Et donc, la doctrine. C'est là. Les prophètes. Prophète. Il dit Giovanni Petro Bellori, indeed, defines idea in the following way, just before citing the same passage from Cicero The idea of the painter or the sculptor is the perfect and excellent model in mind, which things before our eyes resemble, since they imitate the imagined form. Ninety-seven out of one hundred free article views remaining. Subscribe and get more views and downloads. Learn more. Learn more. Learn more. We'll be seeing how it all holds together. The simian, semblant difference. The diluant, seminal difference. In translation to words as the subjects of meaning, the linguistic is there. It is thus so much the, on the one hand, the word units, bearing meaning in combination via the the sun, the syntax, the on the other and the statements other. into words, into hypothetical arguments <sighs> rather than syllogisms. It is no longer the onoma, but mm -hmm. the logos that constitutes logos. the signifying unit. Two mm -hmm. types of phenomena and two types of linguistics, but one is no, linguist no less linguistic than the other. Meaning. Once again, the words as the subjects of meaning, meaning is variable in its in translation difference geometry the word units translation bearing meaning in combination via the, the linguistic is there syntax the 
In translation, it is thus so much that the shaman is there. On the one hand, the subject meaning the linguist is going in translation to words as the subjects of meaning the linguistic is there. I need and capitalized on. It is thus so much then. On the one hand, the Sir Esther, essential, accidental. Sir Esther. Sir Esther, essential. Accidental. One of the traditional ways of defining the is perfectly possible to say of a man that he has properties. The current usage of the pair of copulative usage of this pair of words can pale and therefore to predictate an accidental obliges to distinguish between two perspectives. Sists of referring into opposition between condition using either there. Or a star. My heart aches. There. Or a star. There. Or a star. There. Or a star. White Hawthorne. If the seasonable month endows. And I have ears. Live is and they're using her.
no, 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 it's so we just give her a say. It's so never animal and get her from animals. Food you must differ the yes. And we took look. Another word said. Use and downloads. Let use and downloads. Use and downloads. Learn more. Learn more. Abuse remaining. Abuse remaining. Use and downloads. Learn more. Learn This was a mystique of other seekers to point it off. Almost two teeth white and they they dead dark row her white teeth, white teeth of marrow teeth we upset. I am hard on of God dead be white tender. You I it's not corn and that's the popcorn is in Joe Brand Marilyn Bob Brand said be I think this Alan Ginsburg saying to me. Meeting the British. Meeting the British. <laughs> Meeting the British. Hmm. <sighs> <sighs> 
Mountains leave it. I think we probably need to jump out now. I think when you do group improv like this. The most polite thing to do would be to wait till everybody mutes themselves. <laughs> we, could, we, could, we, we could come up with a for, we could come up with a formula. Like it's over when everyone mutes themselves. So if you still want to carry on, if you want to enjoy the silence, you just like fucking leave your mic on. But you know that that would be a good rule. That's a good idea. Do you think? Do you think that's a good rule or a bad rule? A possible rule. So we can do just like tan tan. I just like the idea that if everybody sort of turns their mic off, you go, actually, that's it, we're fucking done. <laughs> <laughs> but it can be a temporary feeling. Maybe sometimes you feel like turning it off and then you yeah, join again. Yeah, yeah but that, that means you turn your mic off very reluctantly. You know, mm. you just shut up then. There's a difference between shutting up and turning your mic off. Yes, true. This is something we have this is something we have to learn in perform like, in performance, like there's a difference between standing quietly on the side of the stage and being involved and just going right, fuck it, I'm going outside for a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> <True>. <laughs> So we, we need the Zoom equivalent of that. <laughs> Guys, it's so lovely to see you all. Yeah, great to see you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Martin, how's it going? Martin, Gubbins, are you, are you still in your house in where, where I visited you? No, I moved from there to another place uh, uh, some years ago, 10 years ago. Do you, do you um, know what? I, I, I was looking at the, the tree outside your window that I can see on the screen. And I was going, ah, <laughs> uh, I know that tree. That is the tree I saw. <laughs> when I, so I, I, no. I just checked and you were like, no, nah, I've moved. And I was like... Different house, but same, <laughs> same feelings. <laughs> Same others also. <laughs> if you've yeah. watched Breaking Bad, you look like Walter White with your beard and your bald head. Well, I take it as a compliment. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, no, everything okay here. Everyone fed up, but okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> UK's fucked. We're, 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 you know, literally at the point where we're burning police vans in the, in the city streets. Mm. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's not good. <laughs> no. No good. But we'll, we'll all, we'll all get there. Yes. Just, uh, I, I say, I say there's a lamppost somewhere with Boris Johnson's name written on it. That's my, uh, <laughs> that's my take on it. Apparently he said quite tough things today or yesterday about what you need to, to face uh, problems like this. Uh, basically you need, um, uh, what did he say? Uh, avaricia, what did, how do you say avaricia, Felipe? Greed. 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 You need greed. Capitalism and greed. And greed. Some, something like that, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he retracted that. He still said it. And he's, just, he's full of shit. It was a publicly funded vaccine. You know, completely publicly funded. He's just, he's just full of shite. Mm. And mm. we should all go pissing on that lamppost. Yeah, ex exactly. There's a lamppost with his name written on it. Uh, that's what I say. The, I'd say it, more, just, but I'm in the United States. I got my own wankers to deal with. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, at least you got rid of Trump. I know you. Yeah. I know that you've kind of got the. You've kind of got the red problem now. You've got rid of the. Oh, you know now you've got the blue problem now. You've got rid of the red problem, which is a, a different, a different matter. But at least you've got someone you, who's not an out and outright fascist yeah. in charge now, which is a start. Theoretically. But yeah. Theoretically, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Theoretically, yeah, I, I hear you, brother. <laughs> it's, a, it's a place to start, right? You know, it made me think, Chris, I, I know we're done, but I, I, this is the comment I didn't make. You know, it's, it's, it's so interesting that, I mean, QAnon's a bad example, but it's so interesting that, that you know, you, you, how many people you can get together for QAnon and, and, and then try, this is kind of on the last thing you were saying, and, and, and trying to get people I swear to God, I'm not this manipulative, but, but, but trying to get people for, for like your thing, for instance, you know, and, and it's like, because it's thousands of people. I think somebody said um, earlier, you were saying, you know, bums and seats, right? You'll never be Hollywood, but it's just so interesting to me over here, how easy it is to get people together for the most foul stuff, just the most foul stuff, you know? And I don't know. It's strange. I don't want to say yeah. too much because I don't want to go negative. You know, I just think about no, it a lot. But that's, it, it's really important. And I don't think you should try necessarily to compete with that. Yeah. Either. Okay. You know, you, 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 we always knew, I've known all my life that fascism is toxic. That's why they used to know platform. You know, and it was a really big thing in the, like, about 10, 15 years ago when they allowed a fascist to go on question time for the first time um, in the UK, mm. you know, but you, or you no, know, no platforming was so obvious. And it's not because like of political correctness, although that's how it got framed because of like the deeply conservative forces working through the media in the UK. It's because it's a fucking toxic ideology, which has wide appeal. And they, they saw what wide appeal it had, and they were just like, you can't fucking allow that to happen again. Because if you appeal to people's lowest common denominators, it's always going to happen. It's always going to happen. You know, you can, yeah, you know, I've got friends who are sort of anti vaxxers to, to a certain extent, you know, they're not right wing, but they're skeptical about big pharma. But it, if, I, if I fed their, conspiracy theories and if you know they got exposed to more wild ideas it fucking take off man it's mm -hmm. hard enough trying to like convince them it's important to wear a mask because <laughs> you know because there's a nasty virus around um but you know and they're sensible intelligent people but they believe the whole bill gates 
bullshit. You know, Bill Gates is going to control my brain now, 5G, whatever, you know, whatever wacky shit. But it's like the right best. wing have got all this yeah. money. To, to, they, they can, they can <laughs> road test ideas and they do this. They do this on QAnon. They road test ideas. They just throw out the most wild fucking batshit theories that people latch onto. And as soon as it gets some traction, they go, oh, yeah, that one's got some public traction. That's fucking, and then, yeah, it's, it's insidious. It's really fucking insidious. I'll shut up again. Sorry. New Crystal Palace. Well, I'll be here every Wednesday, just so everyone knows. What I'm going to be thinking about tomorrow when I wake up is how you recapitulated your opening remarks after they got damaged. You know, and, and I, I just love what, what you and the others that I know here are doing about breaking language for that reason. I think the next 20 years are going to be about free speech coming from the left and the right, like this sort of autocracy coming from the left and the right. And, and I just think it's interesting that, I don't know, people like yourselves that I consider, you know, kind of like still going on with the enlightenment where, where we are now is breaking language and just really looking at language that way, you know. I, I really like how you, re, you know, you went back to those remarks that I, that was, that's going to stick with me. I don't know if that makes any sense. But. No, no, it, it, it was an improvised gesture, yeah. um, but it was it was a conscious thought behind it somewhere. So I'm glad you got something from it, man. <laughs> Anybody want a glass like, of wine? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> it looks like we all have homework for the next week. <laughs> I think. Well, I, I, I have to go grab my glass of wine also. Uh, and nothing, I just want, wanted to thank you, Chris, again for, for this wonderful session. It, uh, it was great uh, having you here and well, all, all of you as always. So uh, we'll uh, meet next week. And by the way, uh, we are about to, to, to finish our first cycle of one year, exactly one year. In, no way. Days. Yeah. Incredible. Three weeks more. So after that, we, we're going to have a pause. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's well we're going to have a party. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but we're, of course, we're going to we, have a, po a ball. Yeah. <laughs> I can be the DJ. Uh, and of course, uh, we, we'll keep on with the cycle, but uh, now we, we are planning these next uh, three sessions and, and the, we have a, a little rest. But of course, we, we have this, uh, this great community we, we have been uh, organ uh, building uh, 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 over all this week. So it's great that uh, we'll have the, the opportunity to keep exchanging materials, ideas, uh, readings, conference, whatever. I mean, it's, it's wonderful to have this, uh, this uh, very fast communication these days. And, and probably this is one of the, of the best uh, WhatsApp groups in, in which I participate. Uh, I, in I history. Of, in history. It's one of the best WhatsApp in, groups in, in the, the world. Ever, ever. Yeah. Yeah, but we, we have been sharing very few memes, so I think that we, we should <laughs> uh, get better on that. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, thank you. Felipe, before you go, on that point, I, I, I just came to this last week, so what yeah. about uh, bringing other people in? Yeah, uh, it's open to, to okay. bring in uh, the, the only... Uh, the only requirement, yeah, yeah. Right, requirement is, is just to <laughs> be interested in, in poetry, mm -hmm. uh, especially mm -hmm. sound. I mean, that's our, our main uh, focus, sound poetry, mm -hmm. but also music, visual arts, mm -hmm. poetry, mm -hmm. general translation. It's ar around that. But, okay. Oh, you know, you, you, you have an idea uh, at least uh, with the, these two sessions. So, uh, if you know someone that uh, that's interested, uh, and uh, please send me your your phone so I can put you in the in the uh, chat. I was supposed so to do that. Lena, last week. Lena is, is there, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was supposed to do that I, last week. My bad. Yeah. Well, guys, 
Uh, see you next week then. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much, Chris. Come to Wales and visit. Love you. Wow. Good to see you all. Huh? Lots of love oh, to everyone. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Martine, Felipe. Lots of love. Amor. Amor, amor. I, I can't leave. I can't leave. It's not letting me leave. I'm leaving. I'm leaving.